Hey guys, just want to do a little quick demo of the uh, of the tubing notcher. Sorry for the dirt bike helmet, but it's a motorcycle site, and it's the only way I can go hands free. So uh, lathe is in lathe mode now. Um, to get it into uh, get it into tubing notcher mode, just loosen up the compound so the compound can swivel. <coughs> loosen up the tool post there. And we'll take our uh, notcher gizmo here, um, which is just a piece of thick wall tubing that's tapped for a set, set screws, and just clamp down. I have some big heavy welds on there um, right into a tool holder. Now I already have this zeroed out, but if you wanted to do offset uh, notching, you just raise and lower it by um, adjusting the threaded knob. Um, so that just drops down there. Now this distance here, is set to, for it to be on center which is also set here the quick way to do it is just to take a piece of rod now this needs to be 0 0.980 inches um, so I just ground a piece of rod down that you could drop down right on there and it just indexes it so um, we're going to uh, set us to zero here as close as reasonably makes sense tighten that down Come in here, and I like to zero off the chuck. It's fast, um, and it's usually pretty accurate. And just kind of bump it up against that chuck. And give it a quick tighten down. All right, so now we're zeroed out. So if we were going to do a, a straight cope, um, you just tighten this down, where it's already tightened down, and you're good to go. But if you want to do an angle, say like, I don't know, 25 degrees or something. Um, you just loosen this up. Get yourself your 25 degrees on there. Snub that down. All right. Now let's cope some tube here. That looks good. Now I I did bore these pretty tight. Um, I think I went too tight because it's a bitch to get these things in there. Smack on it with something. <clears throat> so, think on the second version. I'm gonna <laughs> give myself a little extra uh, room in there. And these just snub down. All right, cool. So now I'm gonna grab our Full Arbor. And we'll check that out. Alright. So now We're kind of ready to go. Um, I think we'll probably clear that. Let me get my safety glasses on. So, locked down, dog down, ready to go. Now I've been using auto feed on this. Let's start up the lid. And um, speed should be the same as what I set it from before, which is. 135 RPM, I guess that was wrong. <clears throat> so, cut the fluid on there. And it's just feeding um, using the using the carriage. But um, it doesn't chatter, it doesn't make any hideous noises um, it's pretty drama free actually and it works really well um, I guess I already have that one in there but um, the joints are are super tight it just takes some fiddling with to get the height adjustment just right but once you get the height adjustment um, it seems like this should work really well
probably fascinating watching a slowly eat metal, but I used to do it on um, in a drill press vise on my big Powermatic, but that was a total nightmare. It would bind and wreck hole saws. Um, this is a uh, this is much more controlled, um, and the feeding. Auto feeding is awesome. They don't have to sit here and do anything. You can practically do whatever you want. I probably could be doing this a lot faster. And then while <laughs> while you're bored to tears, these are the elder hollows. This is for three quarter inch, and then. Um, this for inch and a quarter. So. And that's about the size tubing that I use on my bike builds. Like this, the Ninja here that I built, um, you know, that's all basically one inch tubing. Um, my FZ1 that's somewhere else um, at the moment in a garage. Um, I use some inch and a quarter, but <clears throat> just pay attention here because we're getting close to the end. Or so. Now the one thing is um, clearance-wise, obviously you don't want to run the holder into the arbor, and you definitely don't want to run the holder into the chuck. But assuming that you knew what you were doing with a lathe. Now we didn't get a complete cut here because I didn't I didn't have the space between the the hole saw. And I would imagine that you could obviously use an end mill. A big roughing end mill would probably work just as well, if not better, than a than a hole saw. So that's it. So grab my The nice thing is, this whole thing just pops right up. Now, got a little ear there. Um, probably means I was just a little bit off-center. Which is fine, because I can always... Just... The nice thing about this is you can adjust it really fine uh, just by using the wheel. Should be able to come out now. Just by using, uh, you know, up and down, up and down, just like that. I definitely, I definitely need to take a couple thousands out of that because that's going to get old quick. So. There's our joint. Now, why is it? Oh, it's incomplete there. That's where it was hanging off when we were cutting it. But other than that, other than that spot, which is not a defect, that's just where the other notch was previously. Um, you know, that's pretty damn tight. A couple spots I can feel. Little goobers there. You know, but I'm not going to complain about a joint like that. I think I just... Must have bent that in. I think that's why it's standing off. There we go. That's it. That was it. And then to check... angle. Snip. This isn't the easiest thing to hold on to here with two things and just kind of I just eyeball that and say that's pretty close. So it's reading it's hard to tell I can't I'm not saying this is exactly but 
it's saying we're 25, well, 24 and a half, depending on how fat of a line you want to look, but, you know, a half a degree. Ain't no shame in that game. So that's it. Uh, and the nice thing is it is that uh, it all goes away in about five seconds from when you were uh, using the lathe for something else. And that's it. So, uh, any questions, let me know.